Was der Ausbruch des Coronavirus für die chinesischen, aber auch für die amerikanischen Investoren bedeutet, das habe ich mit jemandem besprochen, der vor Ort in Hongkong ist. Peter Chan ist der Gründer und CEO von Finanzdienstleister Silverback Capital. Er ist spezialisiert auf Unternehmensumstrukturierungen und Unternehmensfinanzierung. Er lebt und arbeitet in Hongkong. Das Coronavirus empfindet er als Bedrohung und muss seinen gesamten Alltag umstellen, privat wie beruflich, weil Kunden sich nicht mehr aus ihren Häusern trauen. Seine Reisen und die seiner Mitarbeiter hat er absagen müssen. Hi Peter, thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad we get to talk. Hi Sophie, nice to meet you on. Are you and your family and employees doing well? Is everyone okay? Well, luckily we are fine in Hong Kong still. I mean, uh, the virus is hitting Hong Kong pretty hard this time. Yeah, so where in Hong Kong exactly are you located? Well, we uh, lived in the uh, Hong Kong Island side, and this is away from the uh, Shenzhen border quite a bit uh, compared to the New Territory and Kowloon side, but Hong Kong is small though. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you personally experience the situation right now in Hong Kong? How serious does that threat of the outbreak feel for you? How close does it feel? I mean, uh, Wuhan is like a day trip, I feel like away, but people are still commuting and... You just said that the border has been closed, but how threatening does the situation feel for you? The, uh, the situation is quite threatening. The problem is there is no official cure yet for the virus. And everybody is basically trying to stay home or recommended to stay home. Some countries like Taiwan is already disallowing Hong Kong people to travel there in some, some way by not awarding any visa at all to Hong Kong people. And um, if you have probably heard from the news somewhere, Hong Kong, when you or any person trying to go to the uh, supermarket, for example, a lot of the supplies, <laughs> normal supplies, are being cleared by the public in a, a normal manner. Everybody is running into the shortage of masks, so there is a quite a bit of upset feeling about not being able to buy enough masks even from themselves to protect on a daily manner. So um, the situation is threatening not, not because the virus is killing people, but it's threatening because the public are not recepting the situation correctly. So you are the founder and CEO of Silverback Capital. How has your business been affected by the outbreak? Well, I mean, um, we finished the Chinese New Year. And in Asia, the Chinese New Year is like a beacon mo uh, mark for the start of the business for the New Year. This year is way different. So instead of a normal, friendly roadshow for us to meet uh, most of our client after the Chinese New Year, that's not going to happen at all. A lot of the things that we do normally on uh, most of our deal floats has to be done through either on, net, uh, on a net meeting, on a Skype, or on the phone rather than meeting in person to person. A lot of the traveling that we have scheduled to be outside of Hong Kong to meet some of our client or investors, again, was canceled. So it's making us very inefficient <laughs> for the first time in the business that we did for so many years. So... How is the outbreak affecting investors and um, what are they telling you when it comes? I mean, you talked about basically the normal business day or life being completely out of order. So how is that outbreak uh, affecting your clients? This is a very good question because it goes both ways. The simple way to look at it is anything that has a that has a local component uh, will be affected. So most of our clients who had investments in Asia will be affected if they're in local internal spending related business, for example, retail, consumer spending. But however, some of our client in the medical arena had actually been extremely benefit <laughs> from the situation. That's why you don't see a lot of non-abnormal 
downturn from the capital market side in Asia, although there is so much negative news coming out from this end. So this is why I call it the buffet streets uh, when it comes to about the market, especially about a client. And the other end is basically a lot of the local client is actually trying to adapt to the situation by moving some of their business as uh, to an online business as much as possible. Let me give you an ex- example. Some of the uh, client that we have is actually a retail client in the food and beverage business. So now they're switching to online takeaway instead, rather than having their business dependent on being on the retail level, on the streets. Mm-hmm. So um, most of the client that we have had adapted the same philosophies for the last uh, one and a half months. I mean, it's obviously hard to say that for all of the companies, but how much more money is that going to cost them to to restructure their business in in a way? How long are you going to see those effects lasting for the companies? I think it will take another four months to six months to see that results. So a lot of the restaurants, is, for example, in Hong Kong, is already going out of business. So uh, if anybody comes to Hong Kong, they will see a lot of um, empty space on the street level, on restaurants already. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's already hitting quite a bit in Hong Kong, but I think the net result will not be shown until, say, four to six months because Hong Kong is quite a strong economy. So most of the business of people, client here in Hong Kong has substantial uh, financial backup. But at the same time, Hong Kong has been through a lot recently. It feels like um, this is getting almost too much to deal with for businesses, for the economy, for local businesses, because there's just no phase of recovery, it seems, after the protests, now we have the virus. Yes. I think there's also some good news that we see on a weekly basis as well. Uh, For example, just let me name like a few, which I think is worth mentioning. For example, um, one of the major banks in Hong Kong, HSBC, is providing like a $3.9 billion in additional relief to the Hong Kong businesses who has hit it by a coronavirus outbreak. For example, taxi and public light buses operator will be able to just make interest-only payments as will property secure commercial borrowers. If you're trade finance customers, you'll be able to assess up to 1.3 million US in an overdraft facility, just so that uh, hopefully these local companies do live by this virus outbreaks. So uh, when we go back to investors, where do you see the appetite for Asian stocks right now? And where does that put the American capital markets as like maybe the only maybe the only market in, in the game right now that's uh, secure? Interestingly, we do look at a lot of the online businesses right now in Asia. For example, anything that has a m- mobile component in the game like Uber Eats, for example will be something that we'll be looking at. Anything that has a online component with a link to consumer spending will be looked at. Medical healthcare, definitely. We will be encouraging people to pick things up when the things kind of uh, settles down. So as I said, in four months' time, I think there will be a lot of good company with a very good pricing on the stocks because due to the uh, outbreaks, these will be like um, a hot buy because of the low price that you will be seeing coming up in the year. So um, there is still some strong companies with good concept, but due to the um, outbreak, you know, it's temporarily in a pressurized situation on the stocks only. But in the long run, these stocks will recover very quickly. So these stocks are tend to be, as I said, maybe consumer spending, a few of the property companies, in Asia. And I would probably say some of the banks as well in the financial arena will be something that we will be looking at. 
so like you you would say that buying the dip does make sense right now in a way that the fundamentals of the companies are still intact and the only reason why the stock might uh, trade lower is the coronavirus outbreak correct absolutely mm -hmm. what is your outlook on the situation what do you expect time-wise and how much money is lost or shifted maybe into later of the year well i think the outlook is still good for asia there's two component to this i would probably say 50 percent of the outlook will be depending on the virus so once the virus situation is being resolved then half of the problem is okay <laughs> then i think the other 50 percent for the outlook will be depending on the trade world i believe after the election in u.s things will ease off a little bit especially to be in the tension between china and u.s and i'm sure by that time both side needs to work out a solution And um, after these two components, which I just mentioned, if they're being resolved, say, by the late, say, July or August, then the economy will recover very quickly. Well, thank you so much, Peter, for taking the time. All right. Thanks. Have a good day, Peter. You too. Thank you. Heute gebe ich Ihnen ein sehr anschauliches Sprichwort mit. Es ist unsere Börsenweisheit in dieser Woche. Meilensteine sind wie rostige Türen, man muss mehrmals an ihnen zerren, bevor sie sich öffnen. Und dieses Sprichwort, das gibt uns Sam Stovill mit. I wouldn't be surprised if just as we approach 30,000, the market tends to dip once again. There's an old saying that uh, these high level round numbers are like rusty doors and require several attempts before they finally swing open. Der Markt hat die Mauer der Sorge erklommen. Es gibt jedoch einen Punkt, an dem eine Wand der Sorge zu einer Wand der Angst wird. Das Einzige, was die Gier an der Wall Street übertrumpfen kann, ist Angst. Auch die vor schwindelerregenden Bewertungen. Ein kleiner Taucher kann da schon mal passieren, bevor sich die Tür zu den 30.000 Punkten öffnet. Das war's von mir, für heute zumindest. Wenn Sie Anregungen, Wünsche, Feedback haben, Schreiben Sie mir einfach eine E-Mail an wallstreetweekly at mediapioneer.com. Wir hören uns nächsten Montag wieder. Haben Sie eine erfolgreiche Woche. Ihre Sophie Schimanski. This is a five train. The next stop is Wall Street.